I'm here in the heart of Miami on Calle Ocho talking to people about women's reproductive rights. Let's go. Do you think women should have total control over their reproductive health? Absolutely. Uh, 100%. Do you think abortion should be legal? It should be legal. Get the government to stay out of them. When you take away women's reproductive rights, then people end up getting like unsafe abortions and everything. It just it puts more people at risk. The last thing you want is one old a man who has never been pregnant to make a decision about whether a woman has the right to uh, have an abortion or not. The woman's the one that's going to carry that for nine months. I feel like she should have all legal right and morality right to do what she chooses. Do you think abortion should be legal in this country? No. But I feel that there is a life inside that body. ¿El aborto debería ser legal? En alguna ocasión creo que es necesario porque a veces se da, por ejemplo, la violación. In cases of incest or rape or those things, they should have the choice, so yes. Yes. Even if it's not legal, people are going to have them anyway in very dangerous conditions. And how do you feel about contraceptive? Big fan. <laughs> Same, same. I think that abortion should be legal and available. It's not a political topic. What are your thoughts on abortion? I'm not, not really in favor of abortion. I'm, I'm, I'm just a pro-child person. If you're raped, yeah. If you're just out, just having sex and getting pregnant, then no. It's not a contraceptive. Be smart. Sometimes you just need to close your knees and say no. <laughs> In 2021, Texans had 99 problems, and Ted Cruz was only one. But by the end of last year, Texas lawmakers shook it off and shifted their focus to things they can control, women's uteruses. Breaking news, the U.S. Supreme Court has just issued a decision on the Texas law that prohibits abortion after about six weeks. Justices decided to let it remain in effect for now. The court is also letting Texas abortion providers sue the state in federal court. The providers may only sue state medical licensing officials. When it comes to women's reproductive rights, Texas's near total ban on abortion is one of the most intense yet. But similar laws continue to pop up all over the Rust Belt, the Bible Belt, and in pretty much every red state in the US, even though a majority of Americans believe abortion should be legal. Since 1973, when the U.S. Supreme Court decided Roe v. Wade, there has been a federal protection for the right to what's called pre-viability abortion. So abortion before viability is a term that um, refers to when a fetus could survive if born at that time. What has happened in previous years with the protections of Roe v. Wade is that it has enabled providers around the country to provide abortion up to about 24 weeks. What we have seen, however, from intervening decisions by the U.S. Supreme Court that have chipped away at abortion rights is that states have felt emboldened to pass ever more restrictive laws with respect to how abortion is offered. We've seen those kinds of bans and unnecessary restrictions on patient care for decades now have been waging litigation to try to protect access to care for patients. But what we are seeing in the past few years really is different in some ways. The intensity of the restrictions has certainly increased. Last year alone, state legislatures around the country passed 100 anti-abortion restrictions more than in any year since Roe v. Wade. And this year, so far, 41 states have introduced more than 265 anti-abortion restrictions. This is decades in the making from politicians who want to control your reproductive freedom. National Latina Institute for Reproductive Justice is the only national organization that represents the over 28 million Latinas and Latinx individuals here in the United States focusing on reproductive health care and access to abortion. We did a poll and of that it said that women of color voters shows that seven in ten Latinas, Latinx voters see societal and personal benefits to women having control over their own reproductive decisions. In another poll that we did, nearly eight in 10 Latinas, Latinx voters agree that pregnant people should be able to have an abortion without fear of arrest or investigation. And also over half 
believe that it should be legal in all cases. And who do restrictive anti-choice laws like the ones in Texas and Mississippi negatively impact the most? Hint, it's not wealthy white women. Essentially, this, this bill is impacting anybody who has a uterus, right? Um, anybody who has the potential to get pregnant. But even more so, you know, it is affecting people of color. Having Texas implement it and be the starting ground for so many other states to do it, it's, it's just going to create a lot more fear and anxiety in, in so many more people across the U.S. The Supreme Court created the standard, which we now call Roe, back in 1973. We have been seeing bans at the state level and also at the federal level, slowly picking away at the access and the right to abortion. And those people who have been impacted the most have been communities of color and those with low incomes. Think about your process for when you're trying to set up an appointment with a doctor. You need to have a doctor. You need to be able to have insurance to pay the doctor. You need to be able to take the time off of work to get to the doctor. You need to be able to travel to the doctor's office. And you need to also make sure that if you are responsible for any other children in your life or even your elderly parents, that they're taken care for so that you can also then take care of yourself. Now, if you imagine putting yourself in the shoes of somebody who's low income, who doesn't have a flexible schedule, who doesn't have insurance, and who possibly also has immigration status is uh, unstable, then how do they go and get care? The Turnaway study is a, a research study that was conducted and it really tells us that people who don't have access to abortion have higher rates of chronic medical conditions like high blood pressure um, and other pregnancy related complications. With every abortion restriction comes uh, kind of concern for limiting access to those who already don't have resources and so uh, particularly young people, people of color, black, Latinx individuals, um, Native Americans, um, LGBTQ uh, populations, those are going to be the people most affected because they already kind of lack uh, access to healthcare in general. Since Roe v. Wade determined abortion to be a constitutionally protected right, conservative lawmakers have found all kinds of ways to circumvent the law. So far, a total of 29 states have passed anti-abortion bills. And if SCOTUS's current conservative supermajority votes in favor of Mississippi's proposal to ban abortions before fetal viability, Roe v. Wade will no longer be the law of the land. Trigger laws uh, are allow states to go through the legislative process that said, if the Supreme Court decides to overturn Roe, then in our, and leave the decision up to the states, then us as a state have made the decision, we shall overturn Roe in our state as well. So as soon as the Supreme Court makes a decision, the state can move forward in implementing that law too. They wouldn't have to go through any legislative process um, once the Supreme Court makes the decision of whether or not to uphold Roe. We understand, you know, what what we're up against, right? We know once the case, once what is here's the case, we, we have the trigger bans here in Texas, and we're realistic to the fact that, you know, potentially in Texas, we're going to go dark. Abor abortion is just not going to be accessible at all. Our mission right now is to provide the best care that we can in the short amount of time that we have, making sure that our services are accessible and then hopefully sending our patients home better educated and with a plan. Many states with the most restrictive anti-abortion laws, like Mississippi and Texas, have the highest levels of child poverty and the least social support for women and children, like family planning services or paid leave. You know, resources that address the root of the problem and not just the politically contentious symptom. And given that affordability is one of the main reasons many women choose to have an abortion, it's clear that reproductive rights aren't just a social and racial issue, but an economic one. 
there is disproportional the majority of women and girls the ones who end up bearing this weight of having been forced to be a mothers when they are not ready to be mothers. That all affects her life choices. What are her possibilities? Can she go to school? Can she then decide to uh, go to a university or to college? Can she become the type of woman or girl that she dreamed to become? Right? So it has an overall impact of what type of life women and girls can have. Latinas here, we are in a more vulnerable situation in the majority of the cases, there are a lot of the population. So we are going to be carrying a lot of the weight of these bands, and especially those who are living in Texas and are living in Florida. For a party laser focused on doling out favorable tax incentives for wealthy corporations, Republican lawmakers in Texas have gotten backlash from the same players they aim to serve, with more than 80 companies with a combined revenue of more than $20 billion signing a statement condemning the anti abortion law. Because, as it turns out, telling women what to do with their bodies is bad for business. I and the other signers of the Don't Ban Equality statement felt it was really necessary to make a statement that these laws are bad for business. If workers can't have access to the health care that they need, they can't come to work in the same way. It's also about fairness and equity between workers who can get pregnant and those who can't. And it's also about workers in states with access to abortion versus our workers in states uh, where they don't have that access. So if we really want to create a workplace equity, particularly around gender equity, then it's really important that we're paying attention to where we're doing business and whether or not there's equitable health care in those places. This also has a really big impact on our access to hiring top talent, because right now we know that workers want reproductive health care, which includes abortion access. 70% when we surveyed um, say that access to reproductive health care, including abortion, should be part of the issues that companies address when it comes to gender equity in the workplace. Um, and we know that two thirds of our respondents said that the um, state of abortion in Texas would discourage them from taking a job there. So these have very real impacts on our bottom line. We're living in a country where the majority uh, of people actually want everyone to have access to reproductive health care, which includes abortion. And so if you're on the wrong side of that, particularly as we're trying to attract workers in the millennial and Gen Z, um, areas, uh, you're, you're just not going to be getting the top talent uh, as your company tries to grow. A recent study by the Institute for Women's Policy Research estimated that state-level abortion restrictions cost the U.S. economy $105 billion a year. In Mississippi alone, that translates to just over $1 billion annually. Frustrated with the current climate, I did what any other woman would do, and I met up with my bestie to throw some axes. You got no, no, I got it. Here yeah, yeah, go. yeah. All right. Whoo! Ah. Let's start from the beginning. Let's start from the very beginning. Whoa! I've Why? never been pregnant. Why? No, I'm kidding. I've never had an abortion, mm -hmm. but I do have many friends who have, mm -hmm. um, and I and I do appreciate knowing that it is an option for me. And if I didn't live in the the capital of the world, New York City, a, um, I'd be scared. The bronze. Yeah! I don't know why access to healthcare, like just resources in general needs to be a privilege. Yes! Oh. I do feel like every year they come up with a, a new, more outlandish reason because every year we come back and we're like, well, here's why that isn't a good enough reason. If a man tried to control a woman in any other category, this would not be happening. Like, it feels like we were like, okay, we're gonna like, we're trying to reduce the weight. Well, gap. I mean, if you I, sort of look at history. Okay. You know, when they were like, women can't Can vote. Can we guys actually change Savannah Zlorther to well-known historian? I think the people who are making the legislation about it don't understand that they definitely, without a doubt, know someone who's gotten abortion. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think it's confusing. I imagine it's easy to be left in the dark because some people don't want to talk about that. Yeah. It, not nor should they have to. It's a, it's a private issue. But the truth is that it's not this faceless, mm -hmm. personless issue. Right. It's like their aunts, it's their sisters, it's mm -hmm. their friends. Right. Their wives before they married them. Right. You know. Their sisters before they married them. Exactly. 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 Oh! <laughs> 
I think the way to try to convince more conservative people about like, mm. you know, whether it's like your religion is what's stopping you or you just hate women, sure, who doesn't? I do think right. that the way to actually convince them to, right. to be more lax in terms of abortion legislation is by like addressing their wallets, their money, their finances. And if you look at women who are not allowed to have abortions or like legally are forced to carry these babies, we are forcing women potentially to not enter the workforce. The stats that I've read are that the US economy has lost $105 billion because of the fact that women don't have access. Billion, yeah. with a B. With a B, babe. And that's that's a letter that really matters to Republicans. Yeah, it comes right after A, for abortion. <laughs> yeah. uh, Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Give us our rights to abortion. Right. Otherwise, I will bring that baby to the coal mine I work right. at so quickly. <laughs> Not only is abortion one of the most deeply partisan issues, it's one of the most controversial among Hispanic Catholics, right after using the term Latinx. Political messaging around abortion mostly revolves around ethics, morality, religion, not around the economy or even legality. But the so-called moral majority's politicizing of the issue has been building for decades and born out of something that has nothing to do with reproductive rights. In short, Back in the late 1970s and 80s, conservative leaders were looking to expand their base by unifying evangelicals and conservative Catholics. So they wound up settling on politicizing abortion. There's always a stigma, and especially growing up here in El Paso, we are predominantly Hispanic, we are predominantly Catholic. So birth control, sex, you know, outside of marriage, is just not something that's talked about, right? If you're not the one going through the abortion, you probably know somebody who has or you don't realize you know somebody who's had an abortion. There, there's no stigma to abortion. Abortion is healthcare. It's safe, it's essential. Which brings us back to where reproductive rights, race, and economic privilege intersect when it comes to who is most impacted by restricting access. While the Affordable Care Act expanded coverage for contraception, SCOTUS's Hobby Lobby decision exempted religious corporations from the mandate. It almost seems like supporters of the ruling, including the six states that currently allow pharmacists to refuse contraceptives if it violates their um, conscience, aren't so much interested in controlling abortion rates as they are in controlling uh, women. And because birth control, like abortion, is constitutionally protected by a fundamental right to privacy, if SCOTUS invalidates Roe v. Wade, access to contraceptives could also be threatened. The same rationales that have provided for a right to abortion are also the rationales that have given people security with respect to their bodily autonomy over the years, including the right to birth control. And I think what we have seen in state legislatures around the country is that they are some anti-abortion legislators are not going to stop there. As archaically paranoid as all of this may sound to some, we need look no further than where some of our parents came from to get an idea of what a country without reproductive freedom would look like. Every time there is a Republican president, what they do is they impose this gobble gag rule. And so if any organization that's working and receiving money from the U.S. government is providing sexual education in schools in Latin America, they cannot mention abortion as an option. It creates a whole uh, censorship of what nonprofits can do with the money that they are receiving from the United States government. In Latin America, we have uh, five countries that unfortunately still have total abortion bans. A total abortion ban is a ban that will not allow the, a woman to access abortion or a person to access abortion, uh, regardless of if their life is in danger or if they are victims of rape. El Salvador has a total abortion ban has one of the highest rates of um, child pregnancy, girls under the age of 14. It also has one of the highest rates of teen suicide of pregnant girls because they don't know what to do. They are desperate. In many cases, sentenced up to 40 years in prison for a miscarriage or for a stillbirth. At least until further notice, reproductive freedom is still a fundamental human right in this country. <laughs> sort of, like if you don't count Texas. And possibly Mississippi, and maybe a few others. 
But those rights are in the hands of a now conservative supermajority Supreme Court. The same court that recently reinstated Alabama's gerrymandered voting map despite a lower court striking it down for suppressing black voters. The right to abortion is related to and based on legal rationales that have protected people's ability to make decisions about their own bodies in many ways. The freedom to decide who you marry. Those are issues that have come from, in many of the cases, have um, arisen from the same rationales that have protected a right to abortion. And so I think that people who care about those freedoms as well should be concerned about the possibility that Roe v. Wade would be overturned. The constitutional right affirmed by Roe v. Wade, standing precedent for half a century is under attack as never before. If you want to go forward, not backwards, we must protect access to health care, preserve a woman's right to choose, and continue to advance maternal health care for all Americans. Several SCOTUS decisions that upheld reproductive rights pointed to the fact that the Constitution ensures a realm of personal liberty, where the government is a persona non grata. Reproductive choice is in that realm. And the fight to protect personal liberties is something most Americans can get behind. I'm Gabriela Fresquez for Radar 2022. Thanks for watching Radar 2022. Please like, subscribe, and comment down below and let us know what issues are important to you. Because let's be honest, we've all got issues. Some of us more than others.